Hello, I'm Amy Vaughan. I'm a director at the Arts Council and I've been working closely on the investment principles. I am a white woman with uh, mid-length brown wavy hair. I have a white fringe pinned back and brown eyes. And I will be taking you through this presentation on the investment principles, which is designed for governing bodies of organisations wanting to understand more. The next slide will take you through a short film that sets out the investment principles in more detail. And then I will take you through each of them, do a deep dive, and then we'll think about how boards might develop their thinking around this work. Let's Create is our plan for how we can make sure by 2030 everyone in England can be creative and access culture. Published last year, we are now beginning to put it into practice and it should help the culture sector respond to the challenges we all face as we begin the recovery from COVID-19. At its heart will be four new investment principles that will guide our investment decisions and apply to anyone who seeks funding from us. They are ambition and quality, inclusivity and relevance, dynamism and environmental responsibility. Public investment in the future will require these principles to be embedded throughout your work and funding applications. This will vary for different types of organisations and individuals. In many cases, they are already embedded, but we want the best practice to become universal practice, creating a roadmap for the whole sector to reach the widest audience with the best work. Let's look at ambition and quality. This is about cultural organisations and creative individuals being ambitious and committed to constantly improving the quality of their work. Firstly, it means engaging with people inside and outside your circle about your mission and work. Secondly, it's about making sure your plans help you achieve your aims and ambitions and working with lots of different people to improve. Finally, it's about you deciding what quality looks like for you and being endlessly restless to improve future work. Let's review inclusivity and relevance. This is about England's diversity being fully reflected in the organisations and individuals we support and the culture they produce. Firstly, this will mean actively engaging with your local community, especially with underserved groups and people. Secondly, it will mean your staff, leaders and board look like the community you aim to serve and your working culture is safe, welcoming and inspires everyone to do their best. Lastly, it means offering programmes that attract everyone and allow everyone to see themselves in what you offer. Let's explore dynamism. This principle is about being dynamic and being able to respond to the challenges of the next decade. The first part of this will be ensuring that your objectives and the way that you work can adapt to change and they empower you to seize new opportunities to develop and improve for everyone you support and serve. The second part is to understand that you can't do that without a brilliant team of skilled, ethical and resilient individuals. It will mean investing in them and recognising that leaders come in many forms. The final part is embracing data and technology. You will learn how to take advantage of all that technology can offer you and make informed decisions using good data. Let's talk about environmental responsibility. This principle means you lead the way in your approach to environmental responsibility. First, you use good data to understand your environmental impact and plan your changes. Secondly, you strive to ensure that within your business planning, your environmental strategy is at the core. Your plans are supported by targets and you can show positive change. And finally, you commission and present programmes and content that explores the issues. We want the four investment principles to inspire the continuous improvement and development we all need to succeed. They will provide all of us receiving public money a benchmark to start from. We'll help you use the principles as a tool to guide your practice and reflect on your progress. The Arts Council won't set targets for you, but we want you to set your own ambitious ones. They'll be tested differently across funding programmes and applied differently depending on whether you are a local authority-run service, a cultural organisation or an individual creative practitioner. But used well and embedded into your plans, actions and applications, we can be confident that anyone receiving public investment is helping to deliver the vision of our 10-year strategy. Let's create.
So I'm going to take you through a set of slides which look at each of the investment principles in turn. We'll go through the published definitions of them and then consider what role governing bodies and boards can play in bringing them to life. So here's a reminder of the inclusivity and relevance principle and the elements that you'll be responding to. These are the published definitions for this investment principle and can be used as a guide for setting your own targets. In the context of your organisation or practice, what does good look like for these three elements? Our investment programmes will align with these definitions. So having a clear plan that everyone is signed up to and is monitored by your governing body will put you in a strong position to respond to opportunities for investment. So the three elements are communities, and this is about actively listening to and taking account of the views of your local community, children and young people, artists, practitioners, and the stakeholders that you work with. Workforce leadership and governance, which is about having a workforce leadership and governance which fully reflects and represents the communities you're serving, having an inclusive organisational culture that values and develops the talent of all the people you work with, and fostering a really safe workplace where harassment and discrimination are challenged and eliminated. And then the creative case for diversity, which many of you will be familiar with. And that's just making sure that your programmes and activities reflect the culture and backgrounds of creative practitioners and cultural workers. So here are some ways in which your governing body might want to respond to adopting this investment principle. This isn't a checklist, but it's an illustration of what's in the gift of a governing body to influence, change and sustain. If the governing body can play an active role in this, the benefits will be felt across the organisation and the Arts Council can feel confident in your commitment to adopting the investment principles. So fostering safe and inclusive workspaces, creating the conditions for everyone to feel valued and respected with an increased sense of belonging and creating a culture where harassment and discrimination is challenged and elim eliminated. Ensuring your leadership, governance and workforce becomes representative of the diversity and the communities they serve and supporting the presentation of programmes that reflect the talent and stories of creatives from all background. And really importantly, involving and engaging your local communities, particularly those that have been historically underserved by your organisation. And seeking out equitable collaborations with cultural organisations and creative practitioners that have strong track records in advancing inclusion and diversity. And here are the three elements of dynamism. So mission and business model. And this is about ensuring that your creative and cultural mission and the business model that you have in place that supports it adapts to a changing environment and the needs of the communities that you serve. So this is about demonstrating how you operate, how you examine how you operate and developing an understanding of the value that you can create for your customers and your community and seeking out practical ways to improve and develop that. It's also about people and skills, so investing in your governing body themselves um, and also uh, leadership and your executive team, but then also recognising that leadership comes in many forms from right across your organisation and recognising that, um, and that you can back those that inspire positive change. Supporting the development and well-being of all of your workforce, and here we really mean including your freelancers that you work with so that they can deliver your mission more effectively. And also with using technology and data, so committing to using data and all of the appropriate technologies available to you to move your business forward, prioritising developing that kind of data skills and literacy across your business and really using data in your decision making and making sure that it's accurate and up to date. And so some examples of what good governance looks like in this context would be that as a board or as a governing body, you're exploring how the organisation is creating value, who it's for and how you're going to evidence it. And you reflect on and refine the business model of the organisation on an ongoing basis. You value and invest in learning and development and you value the skills and capabilities that are required to embrace new technologies into the organisation. And very importantly for governance, this is about using data driven decision making and really demonstrating that 
through your papers and through the way that you operate, that you pull that data in whenever there are decisions to be made. And so here is ambition and quality. So the three elements of ambition and quality, understanding perceptions, and this is about developing your creative ambitions and improving the quality of your work by listening to the views of people both inside and outside your organisation and very importantly outside your immediate circle. Engaging with them about your mission, talking about the quality of your creative and cultural programmes. Then progression is about your plans for your creative and cultural work, contributing to your aims and ambitions, uh, committing to professional development and working with creatives and partners to refine and improve your creative and cultural practice. And measuring performance is about establishing some indicators that help you to measure and express what good looks like for you and for your organisation and to demonstrate your ambition and identify where you can improve and how you can get better and tracking that progress and then using those indicators to really shape your work and think about your future plans. So how does this work for boards? Well, examining how the organisation is perceived and understanding if there is a gap between what the board or governing body think the organisation is there to do and the way they think it's perceived and what you hear when you test those views with external people and people outside of your circle. What does that gap look like and how might you want to close it? Reflecting on who the organisation is for and who, whose values and whose opinions does it respond to? And here we can link back to um, the communities element of inclusivity and relevance. And there's a really lovely overlap here that you can work with together. Setting and sharing stretching but realistic ambitions. So when the governing body sets ambitions for the organisation, how is that shared right across and how does everybody buy into that to really understand the progress that you can make? and valuing that progression between setting those ambitions and delivering a quality product. What does that look like in between and how does the board track that progress? And finally, partaking in a continual improvement cycle, testing how things are going, talking about it, debating it and feeding it back in then to that perceptions and evaluation and thinking about how the organisation is perceived. And finally, environmental responsibility. So the three elements of environmental responsibility, understanding the data. So that is about using, gathering really good quality data so that you can understand how you can mitigate environmental impact. Planning and action and change. So this is about having an environmental strategy that sits right at the core of your business plan. It's supported by an action plan. It has relevant actions and targets that reflect your commitment to environmental responsibility. And you can demonstrate positive change by the actions in your strategy. And finally, influence, education and advocacy. This is about considering the way that you commission and present work that can help support your commitment that you've made and can provoke debate in the public. So sharing your experiences and outcomes of your environmental journey with your team, with your partners, with your stakeholders and of course the public as part of your advocacy role. And the way that this, uh, this uh, can be taken up by boards is really testing and challenging how the organisation is capturing that data and analysing it, how you are using the environmental data that you have captured in your decision making. And again, here is another link. This goes back to dynamic where we're asking you to really think about how you use evidence and data in your decision making, including environmental action plans within your business planning and referring back to them and making sure that they're part of those key and core decisions and utilising your organisation's public facing activity and encouraging the leadership of the organisation to do that, to really um, animate the commitment that you want to make. And then valuing the leadership role of the organisation and, and understanding that it's a public facing organisation that can really have a role in the debate and discussion and public discourse around environmental responsibility. So for every, every organisation is different and there will not be a one size fits all approach to adopting the investment principles. We will not be telling you how to do this work and we want your actions to come from your own discussions and planning. 
So how do we think you should do that? Well, we think there are five practical steps to this. There is assessing the skills that you've got on your board already or in your governing body um, and thinking about what might be missing and how you might bring those skills in. Um, considering people and representation. So this is about how might you um, look at who you've got on, on in your group, look at the way that you work currently around having perhaps you've got an equality and diversity group, perhaps you've already got an environmental group. How might you begin to assign some of this, uh, some of this uh, responsibility to different structures and people within your existing board? embedding this in your planning and monitoring. So what's your current cycle through the year? When do you look at the business plan? When do you begin to start thinking about your targets for next year? And how might you bring the work around the investment principles into that cycle? Accessing the tools for the job. There's uh, numerous toolkits and resources that are all being published on the Arts Council's website around this, but you may find other other uh, resources that you find really useful as well. And making sure that when you're setting these, um, setting your ambitions and thinking about your actions, what are you going to use to help you do that? What are you going to use to gather the data to help you make those decisions? And what toolkits might you tap into or resources might you tap into to really help deepen your understanding? And finally, producing good papers, really thinking about how are you going to demonstrate that the board has really adopted the, um, the approach and uh, an approach to the investment principles that they feel comfortable with. But how are you going to monitor that and progress it? And how are you going to record the progress that's being made as you as you go through the next few years? So developing your plan. So the board or your relevant governing body uh, is going to be critical to the organisation's successful adoption of the investment principles. And as I've said, we're publishing resources that can support you to undertake that. But we want to emphasise the need to consider how boards currently operate, what they want to change and equally important, what you can adapt from your current ways of working. So as I've said, for example, if there is an equality and diversity champion uh, or a subcommittee, how might they adapt to take on inclusivity and relevance? You can use these slides to start a conversation about embedding the four investment principles and some ideas about how you might begin this work could include board development days to explore each principle. Assessing your existing skills and expertise through a skills audit, looking at where responsibility for monitoring progress might sit and introducing agenda items to your meeting. Now, that could be um, one agenda item. One agenda item is um, assigned to an investment principle each meeting. Or you might find that there are actions that sit against particular principles that you want to visit every meeting. But making sure that you've got a plan for that and that you know how that's going to map out across the year will be really, ho really helpful. Now, this isn't an exhaustive list. You know the way you work. You will develop your approach to this. And as long as you're demonstrating it and we can see it very clearly set out in your board papers, then uh, you'll be on the right track. And our resources are designed to reach a range of audiences. We'll be doing resources for organisations, for individuals, for our local authority and funding partners. And they're designed to be beneficial for those in receipt of both regular and project funding. This slide deck is part of the suite of resources aimed at boards and governing bodies and is supported by a guide to working with the investment principles. And we will also be releasing an animation that underline the importance of this role in the successful adoption of the investment principles. So the, the uh, timeline for developing and releasing these resources is that uh, inclusivity and relevance already has current extensive resources available online. We've published our essential reads around ambition and quality and environmental responsibility with Dynamic coming very soon or indeed by the time you watch this, it may actually have already been published. We are also uh, have published the governance support document, which is the working with investment principles document I've already mentioned. And by July, there'll be a full resource hub available online on our website where you can begin to really uh, dive much deeper into these investment principles and look at some supporting material around them. And then through the autumn, we'll be running an online program, which will be which will have keynotes and masterclasses and panels where we'll open up this discussion and debate. So when you've really started to 
to master this thinking and started to uh, map out the way that, that you want to move towards adopting the investment principles, there'll be opportunities to begin to discuss that with peers um, and to hear credible voices from the sector talking about some of the things that they've done um, and also actually beyond the sector, talking about some of the things that they've done, which might help to bring to life some of the um, some of the progress that could be made around the investment principles. And so finally, um, uh, we just want to remind people that we uh, developed the investment principles with the sector well before the outbreak of COVID-19. We've waited nearly a year to publish them until we're sure they're going to be useful to you. And we do feel that the events of 2020 and 2021 has underlined the need for them and that now is the time to use the investment principles to shape our future. We've produced this, um, this slide deck to help you embark on a journey out of the pandemic and we want to support you and the wider sector to contribute fully to our national recovery and help shape an exciting future for creativity and culture in this country. Thanks very much for listening. Please do uh, get in touch with us if you've got any questions about the investment principles.